And thank you everyone for joining me today. My name is Laura Ronberg, and I am here today to tell you all about Bookshare. We will cover what is Bookshare, what books are in the Bookshare library, who is eligible for Bookshare, and how to read Bookshare books. So the problem is at least 5%, um, and maybe even more 10% of students experience a barrier to reading traditional printed books. Many uh, districts have gone towards digital curriculums or digital books, but just because something is digital does not mean it is accessible for the subset of students who do require uh, accessibility features to access their content. And these students need access to the same materials at the same time as their peers in the formats that work for them if they are to fully participate in the classroom. So this is where Bookshare comes in. Bookshare is an online library of millions of eBooks that are all available in a variety of accessible formats. Every title is available as an audiobook, uh, audio with synchronized highlighted text, Braille or large print. So these are all formats that are accessible for students who require um, accessible education materials. The best part of Bookshare, you know, other than having a million, more than a million titles, it is entirely free for qualified U.S. students of any age. That's pre-K, K-12, post-secondary, adult, uh, adult education, vocational education programs, as long as someone is a student in public school, private school, charter schools, any age, it is entirely free, thanks to our funding from the US Department of Education Office of Special Education Programs. The collection is quite vast. It contains textbooks, books for assigned and pleasure reading, fiction, nonfiction, you know, all the literary classics that students have to read as they go through school. A New York Times bestseller, sellers, all the major literary award uh, winners, career and technical training materials, uh, study guides for GED and all these standardized tests, you know, the PSATs, the SATs, the MCATs, the LSATs, all the books that a student would need as they go through school from, you know, K through 12, post-secondary and beyond. Uh, the Bookshare books do utilize uh, the audio, the text-to-speech voices that are built into uh, a user's device, and we'll go into more of that later. But the collection does also include um, a new collection of about 4,000 human-narrated titles as well. We get asked a lot, um, what makes Bookshare different from some of the other audiobook libraries? And one of the things is that our books do use um, the built-in text-to-speech built into the device, um, but that is what enables us to have, it's like 1.4 million titles, and they, um, the book collection increases by about two to 3,000 titles every month. And these are all timely books. The books are available often the same day. They're available for purchase in a bookstore or from an online bookseller, um, very timely because the book file goes into our database and immediately that book is available in all the different accessible formats. Bookshare books are available 24 seven for teachers and students. The books are all in the, in the cloud. Uh, so students um, can access them anytime, anywhere they are that they have an internet connection or cell service. Uh, there's no restrictions on that it's only for the school year or for the school day. It's 24-7, 365 days a year. There's no limits on access either, um, unlike some other digital book libraries where there's two digital copies of a book and you might need to wait for the someone to be done with it. 5,000 people could be reading the same title at the same time. No limits on how many people can access a book. No need to check out a book or return the book. So Bookshare is just a giant library in the cloud that is always available and every title is available in the format that a student needs um, based on their reading abilities. There are many ways to read Bookshare books on the devices that students already have access to at school and at home, computers and Chromebooks, smartphones and tablets, Braille devices, a uh, smart speaker, the Alexa smart speaker, and other, other specialized assistive technology devices that a student might be using. 
Bookshare has our own suite of reading tools called the Bookshare Reader Suite. There's Bookshare Reader for computers and Chromebooks. There's a Bookshare app for smartphones and tablets, um, both for iOS and Android devices. Um, the apps and the reading tools are free. There's also the Bookshare skill for the Alexa smart speaker. And with our reading tools and the other reading tools that are compatible with Bookshare is that students have a lot of, um, a lot of freedom to customize the look and feel to meet their needs. They can adjust the font type and size, or choose the voice they want to hear the book in, uh, the voice speed, and the color and contrast. And all these um, options for customizing can truly be a game changer in how a student interacts with the text. So Bookshare does um, have a qualification component to it, and that is because we operate under a provision in the copyright law that states that if a person has a visual impairment, a reading or learning disability, or a physical disability that impacts their ability to interact with traditional printed text, then by law, they are entitled to accessible formats of published works. So these are people who cannot pick up a book and hold it in their hands due to maybe a cerebral palsy or muscular dystrophy. Um, they can't hold it. They can't, they don't have the dexterity to you know, turn the pages. They can't see the words on the page due to a visual impairment such as low vision or blindness, cortical vision impairment, any other um, eye disorder that affects their ability to look um, and their eye muscles to move across the page to read or a reading or learning disability such as dyslexia, or specific learning disability, where they can't decode the words on the page, they can't comprehend. Um, if they are just looking at the words, they are not, um, they're not able to understand and master the content. So these were the students uh, and people who, who qualify for Bookshare. It's sometimes referred to as a print disability, um, and there's no really, there's no specific diagnoses that would determine if they qualify or not. The law states that if the professional working with a student and the professionals are you, the educators, you know, teachers, special educators, assistive technology professionals, teachers of the visually impaired, uh, reading specialists, reading tutors, um, Anyone who is working with that student has evaluated them, sees that they have um, a condition that makes it difficult. Um, they're just they're just handed a book. It's not working for them. And that if the professional feels that having an accommodation such as the text to speech or the audio or Braille or just large print, then they are the ones who decide if that students get access to Bookshare. So in the, in the cases of students with visual impairments or the physical disability, it's often pretty you know, clear cut who qualifies. The learning or reading difficulties, um, if a student has not been diagnosed with dyslexia or an SLD, um, but there, there's often other things going on that educators will notice. You know, the students have problems with decoding and reading comprehension. They have consistent reading and spelling errors, uh, poor fluency, um, that might be um, pulled out to receive supports through RTI or MTSS. You know, it's been determined that they're not reading at grade, le grade level, um, despite re receiving adequate instruction, um, that they need additional supports to help them read. Uh, there are many signs and symptoms of dyslexia that even uh, show up in very, very young children. Uh, there's a lot of you know, signs that something is going on that they need more than just a little more reading instruction. Uh, you know, these are some of the things to think about when you think of your students who are struggling with reading um, and to see whether or not they may qualify. And again, it's up to the professionals that, you know, thinking, yeah, if my students had um, the audio and the text and with the highlighted text, that would, you know, and you can test it out with them. And maybe that is the game changer. Those are the students that should get access to Bookshare. Uh, an IEP or 504 is not required to share. Many of our members do have that. And oftentimes these, um, these plans will state, you know, a need for text-to-speech or reading accommodations such as digital or audio books. Uh, students may have an accommodation that they need Braille or just that they need large print. So Bookshare can meet the needs um, for all these students 
for all the books that they will need. And again, it's over 1.4 million titles. Um, and if there's something that is not in our collection already, educators can request that for their students. So Bookshare offers two account types. Organization accounts are created at the school or district level. It, it's up to um, every district and school how they want to organize it. On these school or district accounts, the educators, um, they add their students who qualify. They add they can add their colleagues who also support students with reading barriers. Uh, the students on these accounts can only read the books that their educators assign to them. And I'll be demonstrating all of this in a little bit. But the educators assign books to their students. Students are given a username and password, and then they log in and find the books that have been assigned to them and then you know, read the books. And they can read the books at school. They can read the books at home over the summer, uh, whenever they want to read their books. And we also offer individual memberships. And these can be for students or non-students. Um, even though you know, Bookshare, our, our main focus is students. We do have adult members. Um, it's not free for the non-students, um, but adults can sign up for individual memberships. Um, a parent can also sign their child up for an individual membership. It will be free for the child. Um, and, and that would be in the case of their school or their school district is not using Bookshare or kids can have both types of accounts. Once a student is added to the school or district account, it's very easy for the teacher or for the parent to add on that individual membership account. And then that allows the student to um, independently access books from the full Bookshare collection. So it's, it's and again, it's free. It will, once they have that individual membership that will follow them as they go through their education career and when they graduate and if they go on to college or some other type of um, educational program, they'll still have their Bookshare membership. It will be free as long as they're a student. Um, so those are the two main account types. Um, and I last I looked in Pennsylvania, there's already accounts for almost all the districts, schools. There's thousands and thousands of accounts out there. But what happens is someone creates the account, then they leave, they leave the district, they retire, they don't really communicate that they have that account, and then know it, then you know, there's been a lot of turnover, especially since the pandemic. Um, know that there is already an account ready to be used. Um you know, this day at the account and at the uh, at the school or district. And at the end of the presentation, I'll share my email address. And I certainly encourage people to reach out to me and I can help you determine if there is an account already for your school or district or if you need to create one, which is a very easy process just through our website. So again, just to recap on those organization accounts, the educators who we call sponsors, they you know, if they need to create the Bookshare account, they do that on our website. There's one uh, piece of documentation to uh, sign. It's, it's called our organization agreement form, basically just attesting that you understand that Bookshare has copyrighted information that is only for people with qualifying uh, conditions. You add your qualified students and your colleagues and assign books to students. Students then log in on the device of their choice and read the book. And again, they can only read those books that have been assigned to them. So Bookshare is a great resource. You know, we often get asked, like, well, why would I use Bookshare? You know, there's other sources of audiobooks or accessible materials that I can get from my district or my state. And you know, the one thing I really want to stress about Bookshare, it, it is that immediate access to accessible education materials. Uh, you know, oftentimes at the district or state level, an educator has to put in a request for a, an audiobook or for a Braille file. Um, that, depending on you know, the, the process, that can be days to weeks or even longer. With Bookshare, everything is immediately available and that's 24 7. And again, no need to check out a book. And teachers can easily assign reading from anywhere. All the book assigning happens through the website. So anywhere that you are with an internet connection um, or a cell connection that you can log into a website on your device, you can assign, uh, assign the books and then kids can log in wherever they have the internet connection. And this really empowers students to read on their own with less teacher intervention. You know, you let them know that you've assigned books 
what book you want them to read, um, whether it's for a class, you know, requirement, or you can certainly assign pleasure reading books. If you know your student is really into mystery books, you know, go on and find books that you know they will like to read. And for struggling readers um, who maybe hate reading or they have very low self-confidence because they've struggled so hard with reading, when they're given an accommodation like Bookshare where they can set it up to what works for them, it can really be a game changer and turning these students into lifelong readers and learners, which as we know is a you know, very important skill as you as we go through life. So Bookshare, um, we really strive to be an educational product. You know, we believe that all students are capable of great level learning as long as they have that adequate support. I'm nice that not you know, students don't all start from the same place. And some of these students just need some additional supports to get them um, to master the content that they need to move on to the next grade. And we really strive to empower learners of all abilities by you know, giving them access to their grade level content, just in the formats that they need at the same time as their peers and the ways that work for them. And again, Bookshare and our reading tools are free for students of any age. It's free for the schools to set up the account, the districts, um, some of the um, ind independent units in Pennsylvania have accounts that they use for uh, the students that they support and all the many, many districts that they oversee. So again, always free for schools and educators and students to access Bookshare. So that was kind of the, uh, the, the quick Bookshare overview. Uh, before I go on to, um, I'm going to go onto the website and do a demo of what it looks like for the teacher and student experience. Um, I'm just going to check the questions real quick. Oh, someone has asked, will you provide a comparison between Bookshare and Learning Ally if possible? I know Learning Ally charges, but aside from that. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I would say the after the, the fact that Learning Ally is a paid service that districts or parents have to pay for, uh, Bookshare, we have a lot larger collection. We have 1.4 plus million. I think Learning Ally has maybe 100,000. Uh, Learning Ally books are human narrated. Uh, they're not professionally narrated like you know an audiobook you might purchase, um, but they are human narrated. Bookshare books use the um, the audio, the voices that are built into the devices um, that students are using, whether that be a computer or Chromebook, an iPhone, an Android device. Um, so that's the, I would say those are the, the main difference is the, the, the price, the amount of books available in the collection, and then um, the difference between the human narrated and the synthetic text-to-speech. Also, I'm not certain that Learning Ally has a large textbook collection and a bookshare, you know, being that we are funded by the U.S. Department of Education, um, our big priority is the educational books. And yes, we have the New York Times bestsellers and the Harry Potters and all of that, but um, the real focus is on the textbooks and the curriculum, you know, the, the books associated with the different curriculums that are out there. Um, so I would say those are the, the key differences. We'll go on to our website now and I will show you what um, the experience is like for the educator and the student. I'm on just www.bookshare.org, that's our website. And I'm logged in as a teacher and um, I'm on the My Bookshare page, which is the dashboard where teachers add students, where they add their colleagues and um, overall get uh, a picture of the account activity. So I'm a student, I'm a, I'm a teacher, I've just been given access, I'm going to add my students. And again, educators are called sponsors and students are called members. And by selecting the members link, um, that brings up the member roster, where you can see the student's name, the username that the teacher gives them, their school, their grade, birth date, um, the membership, Organization means the student is just on that school or district account when it says organization plus in individual. That is um, that that student has the parent has signed off on adding that individual membership. So when the parent does that, 
they the teachers can still support the students, but the kids can also log in and read books of their choice. So again, the having that organization and individual membership is a really great. Um, I say it's you know a value. It's a free. It's free. Um, so why not give them access to all the books that they can get. So you wanna add your students who qualify, you just select this add member button and the system will ask you for their first name, last name, uh, birth date and current grade. And then students are assigned a username and password. Um, and that can be anything, an email address, a nickname, a school ID, you know, anything that the student will remember. Um, Cause that is how they will log in um, whether they're logging into an app on a smartphone or tablet or logging in to read on their Chromebook. That's how they access their book. Then here in the qualifying information section, all you do is select whether the student has a visual or physical condition um, that makes them eligible for Bookshare. We don't, um, you don't have to send in any documentation about that student. Again, we are leaving it up to you. The experts um, who are, know these students, you're, you're working with them, you've evaluated them, or the district has done an evaluation, has determined they have a need for reading accommodations. You just simply, uh, simply check one or more of the boxes that um, qualifies them for Bookshare, and that's it. Uh, if they have an IEP or 504, you can check that. Again, that is not required to access Bookshare. And sometimes people get confused because they, they think of Bookshare as a special education resource. And while it is often used in special education, unlike other programs under, under IDEA, um, Bookshare does not operate under that. We operate under copyright law. Um, so it's not required. Students who do have IEPs, though, do have access to a subset of textbooks that are in the National Instructional Materials Access Center, which is the, um, the IDEA-funded uh, repository of textbooks and other curriculum materials. Um, under the IDEA, it states that any, um, any textbook or materials that a district purchases, the publishers have to make a digital accessible version available to the NIMAC, the Instructional Materials Access Center. They don't have to give those files to Bookshare. I, many do. We've been working, Bookshare has been operating for over 20 years now, and we have great relationships with publishers who will donate their files to us, um, but they don't have to. Um, so it's sort of you know, a legal differentiation. Um, but Bookshare is uh, what's called an authorized distributor of the NIMAC materials. So if the student has an IEP, and there's a textbook that's not in Bookshare, but is in the NIMAC, teachers can um, assign the book through Bookshare. It's, it's a seamless you know, process. When you search for a textbook, it might come up that it's a NIMAC book. Then you know, that, okay, well, I can only assign that to my students with an IEP. So if the student does have an IEP, it's important to check it just you know, for that reason. You hit save, that student then is added to the member roster. And then the next step is you're going to want to uh, find books for that student. So again, there's over a million titles. There's no master listing of all the titles, but there's a couple different ways to search. Uh, on every page on the website, there is uh, just the search bar. I can type in Harry Potter. You can type in title, author, or ISBN. You can put in Harry Potter, 619 Harry Potter books, that's either the actual book or uh, we have a lot of the screenplays, the script, Potter stories, books written about Harry Potter, uh, you know, all of the above. Um, so that's, that's one way to search. We also have an advanced search uh, where you can further narrow the search, a word in the title, publisher, if you know you want a book that does contain images, you can check that. Some of our books also have the audible image description. So for students with visual impairments, when it comes to the image, it will read out loud, image with a boy and his dog sitting under a tree. Um, that's, you know, some kids with visual impairments, um, if they don't have that image description, they're, you know, they're missing out on some of the content. Um, books, we do have books in a variety of languages, um, with Spanish being second to English. Um, in how many books? I believe there's like 70,000 books in Spanish. 
or you can um, filter by category. So, you know, your, your student likes animals and they're, you know, they're reading at a third grade level. I just set, selected third grade and animals. And then here is a bunch of um, a books that fall under the animal genre and um, that are appropriate for a third grade level. So that's another way to search. We also, under the browse link, we have um, our explore page. These are book lists that are put together by the Bookshare Collections development team. Uh, they they update uh, the, like the New York Times fiction lists. Um, these get updated as soon as when the New York Times um, puts out their their new list of, of bestsellers for for that time period. Um, our our team goes online and looks to uh, goes into our collection and looks to see what are those books we have and then adds them to this list. So they're, um, and it's a running list, you know, it doesn't replace the previous month, um, it just adds to it. So there's a bunch of different of these, you know, popular collection, what's popular in teens, featured books, um, if it's a certain, if it's a certain a month of, you know, like Asian American Pacific Islander History Month, there'll be collections around that. Uh, there's a section for educators, where we have um, books, a lot of the different leveled reader collections, the accelerated readers, books according to uh, Lexile levels, um, and you can sort various different ways. So a lot of different ways of, um, of finding those books and award winners, disability themes, um, all of that. So you know, a lot of, if you're not sure what, books you your student you want your students to read there's a lot of ways to to look through the collection and find those books if you're looking for a specific edition of a book that you know you're using in the classroom and you want to have the consistent page numbers and so forth i would recommend searching for <clears throat> excuse me the um the isbn so you, when we get um, updated versions of the same title we don't replace it we just add to the collection so when you find the book that you want your student to read, all you have to do is um, you can assign it to them by clicking this assign button. It will pull up the list of all your members on your member roster. You can say, I want all my students to read that book. You can you know, select just a few. You hit assign and those books are instantly assigned to their students. They would log in you know, two seconds later and see, um, see those books um, added added on, on their My Bookshare page, which I will demonstrate in a minute, um, and then they are able to read it. Uh, they don't get notified in any way that you've assigned the books. You just need to communicate to them that that is what you've done. So that is sort of the quick, you know, what it looks like from the teacher perspective. You can add your colleagues once you're added as a sponsor. You just select the sponsors link. You can add your colleagues. Um, you just need their name, their title, email, and their phone number. Once they're added, they're able to then add their students who qualify. So really, really easy. So that is the teacher experience. Um, I will log out and log in as a student. So you can see what it looks like for them. I'm logged in as a student who is just on their school account, so they can only read the books that have been assigned to them. And when they log in, they have their own My Bookshare page. Um, it will show books they've read recently, um, but the assigned books are those that you've assigned to them that you want them to read. And again, you can assign the books that are required for their classes. You can also assign books that they just want to read for fun. You know, it's great before a long holiday break or summer break um, to assign a bunch of books so they have access to them all summer. And then students can decide how they how they want to read their book. Um, the easiest way is to open it in what we call the Bookshare Reader for Web, um, which works on any computer, laptop, PC, Mac um, or Chromebook, all they have to do is hit this read now button. There's nothing to download, no book files to deal with. The book just opens in another um, browser tab. 
And then once it's open, students have options for customizing um, their reading experience. So the settings icon, um, they have these different tabs for audio, text, page, and color. So this is where they choose the voice. Um, I am on a PC and I'm in the Edge browser. And the Edge browser um, has these new line of what uh, Microsoft calls their natural voices. Uh, you can see there's quite a bit of them. You know, for English, you have United States, English, Canada, Ireland, you know, UK, um, different accents. These natural voices are um, a lot more lifelike than what has traditionally been built into computers. They, um, again, though, Microsoft is only, you have to use Edge to get them. So even though if you're on a PC and you're in the Chrome browser, you, you don't get the edge browser uh, voices. They, it's only through, it's, it's the browser dependent because um, you know they want people to use their browser and not Google. So I just like to point that out. If the students do have the ability to um, have the edge browser on their devices, um, these voices are a lot uh, better um, and less computer sounding than some of the standard um, PC voices that we've had for years. Uh, they can elect whether they want to hear the voice, um, the page numbers, or the image descriptions. They can speed it up faster or slower, make it slower. They can choose the text size. You know, for some students, just larger font is what they need. You know, in the cases of low vision or another eye disorder, some people just prefer a larger font. Um, again, very personal. There's a variety of font styles, um, and there's actually, you know, interesting research that some fonts are better for people um, with whether it's a visual impairment or um, a learning disability. You know, the, the sans serif versus serif um, can make a difference in how they're able to track it. There's also this open dyslexic font. Some people with dyslexia like it, some don't. Some professionals argue yay or nay on it. Again, um, it's an option for people who do like it. The letters are weighted in a way that some feel make it easier um, to, to track. But again, and sometimes kids just think it's fun to pick the font they want. Uh, they can change character spacing. Sometimes just having more white space will help a student. Uh, they can choose whether to have it paginated, which you'll see the pages displayed facing like a book or scrolling where it's just one long um, page of text. They can adjust the margins, uh, the line spacing. Again, sometimes just that more white space makes a difference, um, whether or not to display page numbers. And then there's a lot of options for color and contrast. And this is really important too. Um, it can really make a difference. The black text on a white background or the black text with the yellow font. There's some muted uh, color schemes, grayscale, um, and, and all of these are you know, research based on the different color schemes that depending on a person's disability um, can be effective in how they access the content. Students can um, select the color that they want. It does a sentence and word level highlight. So again, you know, students might think it's fun to pick the colors that they like, lots of options to choose from, um, and they can set that up. And then again, any variety of background and text colors. So they set that up, uh, you know, how they like. There's a table of contents, you know, they're gonna start at the beginning. They can, or if they've already been reading, um, they can go to, that spot, they can bookmark it as it's reading. So if they then come back, they can remember where they left off. Um, and then to read, they can just um, either there's a play button, which will start at the top of what that page is, or they can just double click anywhere to begin reading. Harry disentangled himself from Ron and got to his feet. They had arrived on what appeared to be a deserted stretch of Misty Moor. In front of them was a pair of tired and grumpy looking wizards, one of whom was holding a large gold watch. So that's the reading experience with the sentence and word highlighted. Um, sometimes over Zoom, there's a bit of a lag, um, but it's perfectly in sync as that word is uh, selected, is read out loud, that word is highlighted. And you know, if I, I don't like that, that voice, I can go in and change it. 
In front of them was a pair of tired and grumpy looking wizards, one of whom was holding a large gold watch. So again, there's you know, a lot of options. Um, if a student's on a Chromebook um, and using Google Chrome as their browser, uh, Chrome has, I think it's, there's two voices that they provide um, that the students can choose from if they're on a Mac. Uh, Mac has like 50 different voices to choose from um, through Safari. So, and then again, if they're reading on the app, it's, I know, I think I have an iPhone and when I've used the apps, there's a huge variety of voices of child sounding voices, older adult sounding voices, male, female, different accents, um, different dialects. Uh, so again, a lot, lot of options based on the device that they're using. So that's the Bookshare Reader for Web that they would use on computers or Chromebooks. Students do have the option of downloading, um, accessing a book in a, the actual book file in any of those um, accessible formats. So again, every title, um, if they just want to download the audio as you know an MP3, they're going to be going on a car trip and want to listen you know, while on their phone with their headphones while they're driving. They could just download the audio file. It goes to wherever downloads go on their computer and then transfer it to their smartphone or tablet or audio player. Uh, for students who um, read in braille and use an electronic braille device, um, some of them are compatible with the refreshable braille format, BRF. Every file can be downloaded as a digital braille. Um, other braille devices use daisy text. It depends on the make and manufacturer. Um, every Bookshare book can be downloaded simply as a Word document. Um, the Word document on its own um, might not have, um, some versions of Word have that immersive reader, uh, but maybe the student's going to be somewhere where they don't have internet access. They could download the book in the Word format and then just using their computer, using the built-in reader that um, Word, uh, the newer versions of Word have, they get that, um, the audio and, you know, it doesn't have the pretty colors and all the different options for customization, but maybe a student just needs a larger font. You would just download the Word document like any other Word document and adjust the font size and font type um, as you would any Word document. So that's another like convenient and flexible option um, for students who maybe will be offline. Um, also, the books are available as an EPUB, which is a digital, an accessible digital text format that works with um, other reading systems, you know, books, which used to be called iBooks on Macs. Um, you can download the EPUB and open in books. There's Thorium Reader. There's, you know, other um, accessible reader programs out there. Typically, students who are using different assistive technology devices would use that. To using the Read Now to read in the browser, no need to worry about file formats because there's nothing being downloaded. It's just opening. But if they do want to download um, in a specific format, this is where uh, they would do that. They would just hit that download button. It then gets you know downloaded. It will show you it's it's in progress. It gets downloaded to um, usually the My Downloads folder on the computer, and then they would transfer it um, to to another device. Or in the case of a Word document, they would just open it on their computer. So it's really gives students the the freedom and independence to choose uh, how they want to uh, to read their book. And so, but this is how they would come into bookshare.org and log in and see their assigned books. Or if they log into the app, they just log into the app with their Bookshare username and password and access, and they have, they see, you know, it looks very similar. There's an assigned books link and they, um, they see the list and they just you know, tap it. And then the book opens on their device. If the student's reading um, in the Bookshare Reader for Web at school and then at home, they log into their account on their iPad, um, it will remember where they left off as uh, long as you are reading in um, in that in the Bookshare Reader suite. Um, it, it will hold, hold their place. Um, I mentioned that in addition to our uh, reading tools, there are some other compatible reading tools. Uh, we have a help center which is where we have a help and learning center where 
all of our training and learning materials um, are located. Uh, we frequently, uh, we recently updated our website. So if you use Bookshare before, you might notice that the site looks somewhat different. Um, the Help and Learning Center has you know, frequently asked questions. I think, how do I reset my password is the number one question um, that we, we do get. Um, for about, uh, you know, oh, I, I can't remember my password, I'm locked out, and you can easily uh, reset it. And then we have, um, you know, by topics, so say, I want to see all the options for reading books. Uh, we have a bunch of different, these are short little FAQs, uh, what reading tools work with Bookshare, we have information about our suite, you know, which I just showed. Um, there's an image of it on a smartphone. Um, and then we also have, there are some compatible partner apps that integrate with Bookshare. So these are apps that uh, a person would log in to it directly on the app. So say the student has access to iOS device. Uh, we give some options of reading tools that are integrated with Bookshare. Dolphin Easy Reader is a wonderful app. Um, they make a version for iOS and Android. It's free. Um, it's like our Bookshare Reader uh, for mobile. Um, it, they can access the books directly through the app. Um, and it also has some other great features, um, some enhanced features uh, that are great. So if you're able to download that app, that's another great one. Boystream Reader is another one that sometimes districts, they do have to purchase subscriptions to it. Um, but it does have other features that allows you can, um, in addition to reading Bookshare books, it reads any content that you pull into it. You can upload PDFs, you can just put in a URL and it will voice and highlight that. Uh, Capti is another tool. So this page, um, you can come and just look at the other options for the devices that your um, students are using. Say they are using a Braille note taker, Braille Note Touch and Braille Sense. These are some of the, uh, these are the two more commonly used ones. And then there's links to um, those manufacturers for, um, for more, more information about that. So that is um, the Help and Learning Center is a great, uh, you know, a great place to, uh, to come to learn all, you know, all about Bookshare. I know it's, and I have links to some of these uh, key pages on our, um, on, in, in the presentation. I wanted to point out um, on this Help and Learning Center page, if you scroll down, there's the um, ABCs of Bookshare for Educators. And this is kind of like the one stop, if it's the only link you have, we're given, um, hopefully it's enough of the information you need to get started with Bookshare. Everything from, you know, why is Bookshare needed? You know, kind of that there are a subset of students who do require um, accessible materials due to difficulty with reading, you know, print, uh, print books or text on the screen um, without any of those accessibility uh, features. You know, what does Bookshare offer? A little um, video tutorial about book, Bookshare and overview. Then there's instructions. If your school or district does not already have an account, instructions for uh, creating the account and then setting up. You know, you're going to want to add your colleagues as sponsors, your student as members. So this just kind of walks you through um, all the different, the different ways of searching, the different ways of assigning a book. I showed you how to assign books with that assign button. You can also create reading lists, which are collections of books. You know, you can create a reading list of 20 books at the beginning of the school year um, and say, you know, hey, this is all the books my students will need. I'm just gonna make a, you know, eighth grade English list. And then those, you do it once, say you have 10 students who all will be required to read that book. So you just assign them all to that list. And then those 10 students have access for the year to all those books. So the um, ABCs is a great uh, place to uh, look for, um, you know, to, to find out how to do all the, the Bookshare uh, processes. So those, um, and that link is also in our, um, located in, in the PowerPoint presentation. 
We do also have um, a customer support team. Um, so on that Health and Learning Center front page, uh, the contact us link, um, you can send the team an email. We also have a phone number you can call. We have live people answering the phone Monday through Friday, 5 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um, if you're stuck with something or need to find out something about your account, you can um, you can go and you, know, you can contact them by email or phone and they will be able to help you out. So back to the PowerPoint, I would um, suggest, you know, the next steps, find out if your school or district has a Bookshare account. I can certainly um, help help you with that. I will give you my email address. Um, if not, it's very easy to sign up. <clears throat> Just on the Bookshare homepage, there's a big sign up button. You would sign up as a school or district. Um, and it just, whoever signs up is kind of just considered by default the primary contact on the account. Um, once the account is complete, you know, you can then also add your colleagues. You can then, if you don't want to be, if someone else should be the primary contact, which really just means if we ever have a question, that's who we would uh, contact. Um, you can you can change that. Then you um, add your qualified students, assign books, and then you know, show students how to log in and read. Um, the kids seem to pick it up really quickly. They're pretty savvy. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the help and support resources on our website, we have the ABCs of Bookshare for educators, uh, the links to the Bookshare reader, um, which has information about using it on the computer or Chromebooks or the mobile devices and our partner tools. Um, and again, our customer support um, link and phone number. Um, and I want to show you a quick video. Um, this is a real uh, Bookshare member um, talking about her and her family, talking about um, what Bookshare means to them. And then after that, we um, I can go back and answer any questions that might have come up. I would remember getting so angry at myself because I would read something and not have any idea what it meant. I remember thinking that I would never learn how to read until I got tested for dyslexia. Bookshare has changed her life. She has her app set. It looks like a Kindle. Every word is highlighted and she hears the word as it's highlighted and the highlighting moves across the screen. Aware of being on his feet with the loud, not really tuneful singing all around him. Bookshare kind of put me in my own uh, world and I find I found out that this is how everybody feels when they read. She love, love, loves to read. And that cannot be attributed to anything but Bookshare. It's at video testimonial um, from one of our members that really can be a game changer, especially for these students who have really, really struggled to read. Um, and, you know, they think they hate reading. And just once they're given something that works better for them, uh, they they develop a new appreciation um, for reading. Um, I will see if there's any questions. Um, someone asks, can I share this with my non-public school students? Um, yes, definitely. Bookshare is available for public school, private school, charter schools. Um, it's and, and totally free. It's for, for um, any student. And, and again, that's any student of any age. So when the student um, transitions out of K-12, if they go on to uh, a college, community college or four-year college, or they go to say like a vocational or trade school, um, they can still use Bookshare. Um, you know, many years ago, we, um, we, someone had contacted us and say, you know, did you know that students with dyslexia are often super like great technically and a lot of auto mechanics. It's a students, they can take apart and put back together anything. And this man ran a program for um, people learning to be an auto mechanic. And he said, you know, hey, can you get the the training materials, you know, for all the different, you know, for Honda and Ford and, you know, all the different automakers, because these, these people, they, you know, they have to pass a certification exam, but they're like the best mechanic. So we have those books. So 
you know, electrical work. Um, we've worked with the Job Corps Centers of the United States um, for the type of programs that they offer, uh, you know, hospitality and nursing assistance, welding. Um, so again, it's not just K-12 and not just, you know, pu you know public, private, any, any educational program where someone would um, have a need to, you know, pass a test or, you know, they get a certification, they get a degree. And next, that leads into um, how would home students access Bookshare? Um, that would be the parent would create an individual account um, for the student. Um, if they are homeschooling, like they, you know, qualify for free access. Um, when a parent is creating that individual account, um, outside of the school system, they do need to get a form signed by a professional um, attesting that they are qualified for Bookshare. You know, on, at the school or district level, it's the teachers who are doing that. Um, parents are not able to sign the form. They would have to take that form to any professional that has evaluated their child or, or if the child had previously been in the school district if one of their former teachers can sign the form or if they've had an assessment done by an educational psychologist, they could sign the form. The parent would just go into the website, sign up for the individual membership and then get that, um, get that form signed. Someone asked, what is the lowest level reader which can use this resource? I mean, it's really any, um, you know, we have, materials that are, um, you know, labeled as, you know, pre-K, you know, TK materials. Um, again, a lot of those are very image-based, so you can, it doesn't, you know, and have very little text, um, but they, you know, maybe someone just needs that larger font. They could, um, there's, you know, so there's really no limit. Um, some, you know, students with, you know, get very young children with visual impairments, um, you know, maybe just for hearing the book, um, but there is quite a collection of, of pre-K and early childhood um, related materials. That is one of our mandates um, from the Department of Education is to make sure we have early childhood through higher education and beyond. So it just would be a matter of finding um, the appropriate book um, for that child. Uh, but you can, when you search the collection, you can also search by grade level. And if you're familiar with the different Lexile levels or like the leveled readers, you know, we have the accelerated readers and scholastic guided readers. Um, they all have like their own kind of coding system. So if you know what reading level that child has been identified as, you can find those. Uh, drop a video, the video link in the chat. Yeah, sure. I'll be able to do that. I might have to See if I can go back to it. I would remember. I would remember getting so angry. YouTube keeps, let's see if I can find a way. It was just that, oh, shit. There you go. I hope that went through. Um, so when it says I teach children's literature at an online university and our students would really benefit for this, would you recommend working with our librarians, accessibility services or both? Oh, great question. Um, yeah, I would say both on um, just how, whatever would work best in your organization. Um, accessibility services department could be the ones to set up the account, <clears throat> but you can certainly add the librarians as sponsors. That's something we have found over the years um, when librarians are added, you know, because they're the ones, I, that's their passion and their job is to get students books, whether they walk into the library and are handed a book. Um, but there's, they can certainly be added as sponsors and just quickly shown this is how you find the book and assign the book and they can be a great team member in um, getting books to kids. So, um, and typically the, if the accounts, um, what we see mainly as the accounts at it, like say a district level or school level are set up either by the special education team or the assistive technology team or the visual impairment team, uh, but then any other educator in the district or the school can be added as a sponsor. 
you know, the reading specialists, the reading tutors, librarians, um, paraprofessionals who might be the ones who sit with the student and help them read. Um, they all can be added as sponsors. The account can have um, as many sponsors and as many students, there's no limit. Um, we have district level accounts for large, large school districts that have 7,000 students on the member roster. And there's ways to filter it. Um, when you add a student, you can put in so, you know, that's a very, very large member roster. You can sort it by school. Um, teachers additionally can determine, um, add, a add a student to what is their quick list, and they can say, filter it, just show me my quick list. So out of those 7,000 students, they'll just see three that the ones that they support. Um, so again, as many students and as many educators um, as possible. Um, someone asked, can I sign up as a parent? I feel like my son would benefit from this or I do I need to go through a school. You really could do both. Um, first, you can check with the school and see if they're using Bookshare. Um, and if they're not, you can tell them about it. Um, some, and again, we've been around for over 20 years, but with all the educator turnover that has always happened, but exacerbated since COVID, um, some of that institutional memory gets lost. And then we have a whole crop of new educators who maybe never learned about Bookshare or haven't heard about it before. So they might not be using it simply because they don't know about it. Um, so that's one avenue is to ask them to create an account and add your child. Um, or you can create that individual membership for them. But you would need the one barrier there is when the parents are doing that is you do have to get that form signed. And that can sometimes be a barrier, um, depending on if, you know, what type of assessment the if, if the child is, if they haven't had an assessment, then you often need to go and find out someone that can do that. It can be expensive. Um, some cases, your pedi the pediatrician can do it. They, you know, might know the child has a visual impairment or, um, you know, some pediatricians um, have gotten very engaged in the literacy space and might be the ones to say, hey, I think, you know, your child could have dyslexia. So it really depends. Um, but it certainly never hurts to ask at the school level because it very well could be they're using it or someone knows about it in the school and they just have not um, identified your child as needing access. Um, someone asked, can a private education company be a sponsor for their students in non-public schools? Yeah, a private education company, um, we have some like you know, tutoring organizations um, that create accounts for the students um, that are using, that you know qualify for Bookshare. So uh, you could certainly, you could set it up as that. Um, kind of where I've seen this more is, you know, different tutoring services or um, if someone has their own, you know, their own, you know, their consultant, they run their own tutoring company, whether that be like a national chain tutoring company or just on their own, um, they can create the account. Um, and it's free as long as that the members on the account are, um, are students. Um, someone asked, can I create a Bookshare account for a literacy center? Uh, yes, yeah, certainly you can do that. Um, again, you just go on to the book to the website um, bookshare.org and uh, and create the account for your organization. And as long as it is for students, it's free. Um, we often get asked, you know, like a, a library might want to create an account. Um, it is since a, a library is not necessarily an education entity um, that is not free for them. You know, we have libraries that say, oh, we have like adults that are learning to read. Um, but that is then there is a cost if it's a non-educational institution. I do want to mention what's great in Pennsylvania is we have um, a partnership with the, um, it's called the Library for Accessible Media for Pennsylvanians. It is the, um, the National Library Service Affiliated Library um, in Pennsylvania. And they contract with us to, um, they basically pay us for them to be able to give free Bookshare memberships to their patrons. And the National Library Service operates under the same copyright law um, to provide accessible books to people with visual impairments, physical disabilities, or learning or reading disabilities. So for students, um, when they're out of the K-12 system, if they're not going on to another education program, if they wish to continue with Bookshare, 
they can contact the um, the Library for Accessible Media of Pennsylvanians, LAMP, and um, they have to become a member of the library, which is free. It gives them their library card, and then they can get free Bookshare access through them. They pay for uh, you know a block of memberships every year, so that's one way for when someone is no longer a student um, to get it. But they again, as long as they go on to college, um, I know we've worked with um, Penn State University to set up accounts. So they have um, accounts. They have like you know account that for student at any of the Penn State uh, campuses. Um, they're uh, you know, big Bookshare champions and very engaged. You know, again, a student goes to college. They typically go to the disability student support op office and say, you know, hey, these are the accommodations I need. Um, but once students who are 18 or over, they can actually go online and create their own Bookshare account. You know, if they had used it at school and then they left school and they never had an individual membership, they can create their own. It's just for the students who are under 18 that um, a parent does need to uh, sign off on, on that account because, you know, again, it's a student under 18. Um, but when someone is 18 or over, they can create their own account. It will be free for them as long as they're a student um, or the price for non-students is $79.99 a year. And again, it's $79.99 for the unlimited access to books. There's there's like a monthly download limit of, I think it's 150 books. Um, and if someone is reading more than 150 books, which is quite impressive, they can request um, to have their, their cap increased. Laura, just, just sorry to interrupt, 15 minutes. Okay, great. Um, I think I've gone through all the questions. If there's any um, further questions, um, yeah, definitely put them in the chat. Here is my email address, Lara R at Benetech.org. And feel free to reach out. I can help, um, I can look up and see if your school or district has an account. Um, and if so, I can help you get access to that. Or if any other questions, technical or otherwise, um, you know, kind of just a special a benefit. We do have the customer support team. It will be a little bit longer wait time, um, but you can certainly reach out to them as well. But I, I know school is pretty much, I think most places done for the summer. Uh, but if, if you feel like this is a resource that will benefit your students, you know, over the summer, you can certainly get your account set up um, and start looking at the books. If you know um, what books will be used, um, whether that's, you know, a state required or district required curriculum, you know, look for them in our collection. Um, once, you know, you're a sponsor, once you have an account and you're a sponsor, um, you can request a book. You can just go into the help center and there's a, how do I request a book link? Um, and over the summer is a great time when our team has more, that's when they really work on fulfilling the book requests. And they really do their best to get a book into the collection. We'll first go to the publisher and request a digital file. If they give it to us, that just takes, can be a week or so. If they won't give it to us, we purchase a hard copy of the book, you know, chop off the spine, scan the pages. That can take several months, um, unfortunately, but there's no other way to get it in. And you know, over the years, we have more and more publishers willing to give us the digital files, but some don't want to because, you know, a lot of, especially the textbook publishers, it, it's big business. So they see it as a revenue um, loss. But what we we just really try to state is like, you know, for these kids, they need this material. And a lot of publishers just on their, you know, they 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 show goodwill and um, do provide us with those copies. So just something to think about over summer. Uh, maybe over summer, you don't want to think anything about school, um, but just know it's a resource when it's back to school time um, to to get this going. So it's ready for your students um, when they show up on the first day of school.